Liquid Sulfur Geyser, what is this and how does this work? Hello to all the meeps and bubbles, let me explain what I did here. The function of this contraption is cooling liquid sulfur down so far that it solidifies. After that it will be cooled down to a temperature range that you set beforehand. In our case everything lower than 30 degrees celsius is fine. So what is the reason that this looks so complicated? First off, liquid sulfur has the property of only solidifying at temperatures around 115 degrees celsius. And since our steam turbine only cools stuff down to 125 degrees celsius, we cannot solidify the sulfur that way. So we are using a lot of tricks and features to achieve exactly that. Of course you could just extract all the energy out of the sulfur until you reach 125 degrees and then brute force cool it somewhere, but I wanted it in a single contraption that can be built once and then forgotten. But also remember that this build still needs external energy to run, even though you can extract some energy when the geyser is erupting. So what makes this building tick? First off, we know where the sulfur is erupting. It is a second tile from the bottom left of the neutronium. The erupting sulfur then makes thermal contact with the diamond tile above. The heat is then being shared with the diamond, the petroleum and the steam, which the steam turbine can take care of. This already helps extracting a small amount of heat energy. Even more will then be extracted by these radiant liquid pipes. The liquid pipes have the output water from the steam turbine running through them. Each pipe holds 1 kilogram per tile, which is only one tenth of the pipe capacity, meaning the pipe can't break, even though the water is already over 100 degrees celsius. The heated water is then transported up into the steam room. The next question is probably why do we have an auto sweeper as well as a liquid pump? While the liquid pump alone could, without any problem, handle the liquid sulfur, it is more effective to use the steam turbine output water to solidify the sulfur. The second reason is when you are building the pump it is way too cold and solidifies the sulfur anyways. The little sulfur piece that is created will then just sit there for over 700 cycles and grow and grow and grow. Of course there's a solution for that. Just make a tiny pool, let the sulfur accumulate and then build the pump in it. But that would make the build bigger and less efficient. And I don't like that. I like the size that we achieved here. In our contraption the liquid is being sucked up here and then dumped in a cooling room, which uses crude oil and petroleum for heat transfer. You probably can use any liquid that does not freeze. The liquid sulfur then often drops as a solid, probably because the conveyor bridge behind the liquid vent already cools it down. Then the auto sweeper will take care of it, pick it up, put it in the conveyor loader and send it off into our cooling area. If the sulfur already solidifies down here, the auto sweeper takes care of it and directly places it into the conveyor loader, which bridges the solid sulfur onto our cooling conveyor loop. The conveyor rails are set up in a way that the material on it will circle around and will get checked at this point here for their temperature. If the temperature is right, in our case below 30 degrees celsius, they will get sent off and end up right here. Otherwise the sulfur will keep on looping around until it reaches the desired temperature. And if there is a free spot on the conveyor cooling loop, the conveyor loader will try to top it up. The piping for the cooling is quite the mess, so let me explain it in this overlay first. I'm using polluted water cooled down to minus 4 degrees celsius or aqua tuna subtracts 14 degrees, so maximum of minus 18 degrees. The water loops around and first cools the area where the temperature is checked, so that this area right here is always the coldest part. After that we are cooling the main cooling area, the diamond tiles. You could also try metal tiles. And after that the liquid will cool down the steam turbine. The rest of the cooling power is used for the solidifying room. The automation for the whole contraption is super simple. You just connect up the liquid pipe thermal sensor to our aqua tuner, the conveyor rail thermal sensor to the conveyor shutoff, and we have the option to connect up a thermal sensor to the steam turbine, which we can set to 125 degrees celsius to get rid of the red symbols. The liquid pipe thermal sensor checks if the water is warm enough that it needs cooling, otherwise the aqua tuner shuts off and the liquid bypasses it. The conveyor rail thermal sensor checks if the incoming sulfur is cold enough to be sent to the base. If not, it will cycle around. You can also set the value to a higher degree so you get your sulfur quicker. Even though the cooling area will still cool down to minus 4 degrees celsius, not as much cooling power is extracted. Here are the liquids I am using. The golden color is petroleum and the dark purpley color is crude oil. You probably can use any liquid that does not freeze at the values you put in for the temperature control. Or in case of the petroleum in the lower part of the base, something that is similar heat resistant. In the steam chamber, pure water could also be fine. I submerged these three tiles in liquid so that the cooling effect gets transported to our sensor. The steam turbine itself does not have to be in a vacuum. You can even open up the room and let some atmosphere in. 
place a door there, but that way you will be wasting your cooling energy. The liquid in the corner right here cools down our auto sweeper. The auto sweeper produces heat energy and can burn itself to the ground if not cooled. So we are using the output water from the steam turbine at around 95 degrees to cool that thing down. Our liquid pump doesn't need cooling, it will be cooled by the output sulfur at around 165 degrees celsius. So you need to build that out of steel. The auto sweeper as well of course. If you want to see the overlay and materials again, go to the top right corner and check out my short. You can use this to, for example, supply your grub fruit plants with enough sulfur so they can grow. You may even throw in some wild grub grubs. If this helps you understand this build better, leave a like and now an assortment of failed attempts. Here are a few versions before I figured it out how I wanted it to be, but pretty finalized. And here are my first tries. If you also want to check those out, go to the short video, there are some save files in the description. A special thanks to all of my patrons, love you guys and Luma out.